On today's Locked on Jayhawks, hello darkness, my old friend, Gay who loses in the second round to Arkansas. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Johnson, you can hear me as well on Rock Chalk Sports Talk Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN and Lawrence. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get any of your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. And uh, on today's edition of the show, a little bit of a sad version. KU Falls, their, their season is officially over. They lose in the second round of the NCAA tournament to Arkansas by one point, a game that they led by 12 In the second half, a game that they looked good going into the break, a game that they didn't have Bill Self, and for a while it looked like they were going to be okay and that maybe Bill Self could be back next week, or I guess this week now in Las Vegas in the West region, but certainly um, not the ending that you would have hoped for. And it's impossible to look in the crystal ball. Certainly you would think, hey, if you lost Arkansas, you know, UConn looks pretty good. Are we just delaying the inevitable here? But no, I mean, in the NCAA tournament, it really is survive in advance. You, you worry about the next thing later, and you would have a full week of prep with Bill Self when he's done so well if he would come back for the possible UConn game. But that's neither here nor there because that is not a possibility anymore. Um, kind of eerily similar to me to the 2009 tournament run, and obviously a lot of people will sprinkle in some of the 2013 too because of the 10-second call, uh, which was just an unnecessary error on your own part that – really gave the momentum and the chance that that maybe it was that one extra play, that one extra possession that lost you the game. So there is the similarity there. I thought it was similar to 2009, though, because so just like 2009, KU was defending champs. They were trying to win back-to-back titles. And in 2009, it was in the Sweet 16. But that was a game that KU was in control over Michigan State. And then they kind of let it get away from Michigan State starts, you know, mounting the comeback and then Michigan State ends up winning. That's what happened in this one. KU was in control for the first 25 minutes of that game. And then Arkansas slowly works their way back. All of a sudden you got a tie game for the final five minutes or so. And then you kind of fall apart at the end. It was very similar there as you were trying to kind of defend your title. And you know what else is kind of similar there? That 2009 team. It was really like two guys, right? Like, I, I know you had a, a freshman, Marcus and Markeith Morris, who ended up being great players at KU, but they weren't great that first year as freshmen. It was mostly the Sharon Collins show, mostly the Jalen Wilson show this year, and you had a lot of Cole Aldridge sprinkled in doing a ton for you that season too. Well, this team had a lot of, you know, it kind of depend which the second guy was game to game. Uh, maybe you'd take Grady Dick or Dewan Harris, whoever. Um, so I, I thought there were a lot of similarities there, but as far as the game itself, the first half, you looked really good. Your defense was awesome. You held them to 27 points. You basically sagged off shooters and said, hit shots. We're going to stop you in the lane. And they couldn't because they're not a good three point shooting team. And it was a really good plan on the defensive end in that first half. Um, then in the second half, you gave up way too many offensive rebounds. You could not stop them driving to the rim, even without their, their kind of lack of shooting. They hit a couple threes, but You know, it wasn't a great game for them shooting. It was a bad game for them shooting, even for a bad three-point shooting team. And then, um, on top of it all, just late-game execution, kind of going out the door. You have the mistake of the 10-second call. You have uh, not playing guys uh, who, you know, maybe you should have risked it with foul trouble. You also had to deal with the foul trouble. You you had not going for the three at the end. I I don't know. All sorts of stuff went wrong for you in that second half to lose that game, as a lot of times things do when you lose a game like that in the NCAA tournament. And I think in the end, this team's flaws were probably too big to overcome. Uh, Like you look back over the flaws of the season, there weren't enough offensive creators. There were not enough guys who could get you a bucket consistently, especially in those half court tough situations and could score for you. That remained a problem all year long. Late game execution, right? Missing out on stuff. We saw that a lot in the K-State game and a few other games. Um, Struggles against physical athletic teams. You think back to the Tennessee game. You think back to both games that you lost against Texas, the one loss you had at home against TCU. It's not that you lost every game against athletic and physical teams. You still beat Texas. You still beat TCU. But overall, the majority of your struggles came against teams that were like that. They were athletic, physical teams, right? You can even chalk K-State up in that as well with 
Uh, Keontae Johnson, he's physical. Marquise Noel is really athletic and quick. Uh, like Tomlin is is really athletic for for kind of a big man. So uh, you look down the road, that was what gave KU troubles, and, and a lot of their issues came back to haunt them. The one thing that you didn't expect to come back to haunt them was the defense. The defense has been KU's calling card this year. Coming into the game, it was a top 10 defense. I think now they're ranked 11th on Ken Palm. That's kind of what's let you down in the second half. Yes, there was that lull in the middle of the second half where you had a drought without points, but you gave up 45 points in the second half to an Arkansas offense that could not shoot from three and wasn't shooting well from three either. You could not stop them. You could not get the rebounds. The defense kind of let you down in that game, which is unfortunate for KU. Obviously, though, no Bill Self, and that had a gigantic impact on this game. First of all, we know Bill Self's record in one-score games and one-possession games and single-digit games is remarkable. It is absolutely remarkable. So it's tough to say, hey, if you don't have Bill Self, that doesn't give you the edge in what ended up being a one-point game. And a big reason why is all the little things he does over the course of a game. It's not just the late game execution. It's over the course of a game where he's going to get you a big advantage in the out of timeout plays, in the sideline out of bounds plays, the, the, the baseline out of bound plays. He is known as the best in college basketball at those things. So maybe you get one extra bucket out of those. Maybe you get two extra buckets, and that is enough for you to win the game. And it's not its not a slight on Norm Roberts. Norm Roberts did an excellent job this season filling in for Bill Self. He went 4-0 in the regular season, 2-1 in the Big 12 tournament, goes 1-1 in the NCAA tournament, 7-2 overall, including wins over you know Iowa State and West Virginia, who are tournament teams, and Duke, who's a tournament team, right, with only losses to two teams who are in the Sweet 16 in Texas and Arkansas. He did an admirable job for Bill Self. But there, you, you have to acknowledge, it's like the difference of when, I don't know, I'm trying to think, like if you put into the Chiefs offense, right, you took out Patrick Mahomes and you gave them Derek Carr, like Derek Carr is probably still what a league average quarterback above league average. I, I don't know wherever you want to put him, right? Say he's the twelfth best quarterback in the NFL. That's still pretty good, but guess what? There's still a big difference if Patrick Mahomes in there, and that's the thing. Norm Roberts, hypothetically, even if you said Norm Roberts is the twenty fifth best coach in college basketball, still have to acknowledge. Well, there's still a big drop off to number one because that's Bill Self, and it's hard not to think that wouldn't have changed the game. And obviously, I'm not saying that Bill Self should have coached. Like, get better, get your personal health okay. Like, that was the right call for him to sit out the game. It was. I'm just saying it is unfortunate because KU probably wins that game. If the And I know if, if there's an Arkansas fan listening to this, they're probably mad because, you know, guess what? You don't have to be mad about this. You, it, it's a hypothetical scenario. You won in real life. Go take your win. Be happy with it. Right. We play based on what is in front of you and in real life. You got the win. You're moving on. You're the team kid that keeps playing. Right. But I think it's hard not to say for if you're Kansas, yeah, it'd be different without Bill Self. Whether it was those just little things he does over the course of game, or maybe drawing up a three point play at the end of the game instead of them going for a two and then never really getting a shot to take a three to try to tie the game or whether it's adjusting in the second half because Eric Musselman did a great job adjusting at halftime and changing up what Arkansas was doing to really attack KU in the ball screen defense. Does Bill Self find the better adjustment on the defensive end? And then on top of it all, like the KJ Adams conundrum, he gets in foul trouble. He doesn't come back into like the seven or eight minute mark of the game. Does Bill Self have a little more confidence and say, no, look, they're going on a run, and a big reason why is because we don't have K.J. Adams in there because none of our other centers are providing any offensive threat. K.J. at least is providing some. Let's put him in with 10 or 11 minutes. And those three or four extra minutes that he could have been in with a coach who's more seasoned and could have had more confidence making a risky play like that, maybe that's an extra one or two point difference as well because K.J. was arguably the most important player for KU in that game. And I think it's worth noting even after he got put in with seven or eight minutes left, he didn't end up fouling out. So he could have played an extra 15 seconds and maybe fouled out. He could have played maybe an extra five minutes and not fouled out. We don't totally know. But those are some of the little things that you think they probably would have won the game with Bill Self. But again, they didn't. And you had what's in front of you. And uh, you kind of blew it. You probably, even without Bill Self, should have won the game, if not for some things that went against you. Arkansas played really, really well in the second half. That's a really talented team with Arkansas. Uh, we knew it was kind of a tough matchup coming in, and, and certainly it ended up happening. So uh, you add it all up, March is a very fickle time of year, right? Even 
despite all of that stuff. They could have won this game. But March is very fickle. It is a tight line. No defending champ has made it past the, the first weekend since 2016. It's tough. No defending champ has made the Elite Eight since 2007. It's very, very difficult to repeat because you need things to happen for you in addition to playing well. And there were a lot of times this season where KU wasn't playing well and showed some flaws and then some weird stuff in March happened and you combine it together. And this is what ended up happening. A little bit of a too early of an exit for uh, this team. And, and certainly, I think one of the biggest differences between you know college sports and professional sports, I, I think a lot for fans, is almost the it's the emotional, sad sort of attachment part. Whereas in the pros, you lose a playoff game. If you're a fan, you're mad about it. You're sad. You're angry. Whatever it is. But you're looking back and you're like, all right, this is how we're going to improve next year. This guy's back. This guy, whatever. In college, everything has a finite capsule to it. And that almost makes it more emotionally charged. It almost makes it a little bit more meaningful each run you have because it's always with different players and these guys might mean so much to you or the program or whoever. And so to see Jalen Wilson have to go out like that, he's going to be one of the more decorated players in Bill South history. We'll talk about that later this week. It's it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate they didn't get a, to make a real run at trying to defend the title with Bill Self and Jalen Wilson kind of together. There. I'll get, let's get to our uh, goats of the game here with Locked on Jayhawks. But first, this episode is brought to you by Built Bar. The Built B- March Madness brackets uh, are here, and we know you have a favorite bar or puff. Now's your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked on listeners will get a free box of Built Bars. Not only that, but one Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try Built Bar, the best protein bar ever. They are so amazing. You won't think they're good for you because they're covered in 100% real chocolate. They taste amazing, but they're high in protein, low in sugar, taste great. So run to BuiltMarchMadness.com. You can vote for your favorite bar or puff. Pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop in, support your pick, get it done, and win some free stuff with Bilt Bar. On our goats of the game, we'll uh, get to our good first. KJ Adams, 14 points, three rebounds. Now, certainly, uh, as kind of all season long, like you're left a little bit more to be desired with in terms of the defensive rebounding of KJ, which that hurts you in this game. Arkansas had 14 of them. But KJ was so important in this game. He had to deal with foul troubles. He had 14 points. He was, it was just so different how Arkansas defended you when he was and wasn't on the floor. When he wasn't on the floor, all Arkansas had to be worried about was, are they going to throw a lob to Ernest Uday or Zuby Edgefer? When it was KJ, they did have to worry a little bit about him catching in the short roll and maybe popping it from there, catching it up high and driving into the defender. And in a lot of times, because of how much emphasis they were putting on defending Jalen Wilson and some of the other KU players, KU's best offense was just giving it to KJ and letting him drive one-on-one because they were leaving him one-on-one, and he's able to score there. He played really well. He had 14 points. I thought he was the most important player for KU in the game. You saw when he was off the floor with the foul trouble how Arkansas started to to mount their comeback versus when he was on the floor, they were either even or winning like every stint that he was out there. Um, He was really good for KU, and, and I think that was nice to see in a tournament setting. Just unfortunate he did have the foul trouble. Dewan Harris, I think, gets a good goat call. Um, I know that, I don't know, for some people, the, the 10-second call might be enough that, that you're willing to kind of you know toss it aside here, but it's one mistake he made. And I will say, uh, the turnover numbers were higher than I would have expected them to be in the tournament. I think he had seven turnovers between the two games after he was in a zone for a bit heading toward the end of the regular season where it'd be like zero one turnovers per game. Um, And that 10 second call certainly is part of the story here. So it's not a perfect game for sure, but I kind of thought if KJ was the most important player, I I thought for stretches of the game, Dewan was your best player. Now maybe down the last four or five minutes of the game, that wasn't as prevalent, but certainly for the first 25 minutes of the game, when you got up 12 and after the first half, he was your best player for the first 25 minutes of the game. He finished with 12 points, five assists, four rebounds. He had two steals. He was five of nine from the floor. He was efficient. He got you in good situations. Um, he did a really good job defensively early in the game. He kind of just X'd out Nick Smith and, and made him become like a bench player because Arkansas was mad with him. He was he was really impressive for you, I thought. Uh, just 
kind of stinks that it got spoiled a bit by that that 10 second call but i thought overall he had a, a very good game jalen wilson gets a good go 20 points four rebounds i i thought it was funny because i i thought arkansas did a really good job defending him um they had the uh the well, I, I guess they're kind of a combo of things like they, they really did a good job of hedging when he would get to the, the rim. They would have another defender there so that he couldn't keep driving it. And he kept get, getting cut off by the, the Welch kid who did a really good job defensively on him. Um, so I thought they did really good. But also at the end of the day, you look at Jalen's stats. He had like 20 points on like, was it 9, 10, 11 shots? I mean, he was super efficient. Um, and yes, he, he messed up. This is kind of the same thing with Duan. Like, yes, he messed up the free throw at the end of the game that you needed to hit, but he still overall, over the course of the game, he he had a good game even though he was supposed to miss that free throw and ended up making it. So efficient, and even though they did a great job against him, he still had a very efficient game. The other thing that you would have wished more for, only four rebounds. Again, you give up all those offensive rebounds. He was your one guy who typically was getting eight or nine rebounds a game. You'll wonder if that was a big difference there. Kevin McCuller gets a good goat here. 13 points, five rebounds, two blocks. He was 5'8 from the floor, and he was hitting tough shots for you. I mean, he's uh, – with Jalen, I, I think you feel bad that he didn't get a chance to defend his title and that he goes out like this. But realistically, no matter what, if KU lost at any point in the tournament, it was going to be sad for Jalen and everything that he had done. Kevin, I almost feel the worst for – that KU wasn't able to make a deeper run because Jalen and Dewan, and even though KJ wasn't, you know, a primary player for that team last year, like they, they've all won a title. They were on last year's team. They've made that run with Kevin. He hasn't really had a chance to do that. He was, he was on the team with tech that went to the title game. I think he redshirted. He joined it like semester, but he hasn't like played for a team that has made, I believe an elite eight or further. And for him, you wanted to see them go far so that he got kind of a taste of that. He was doing everything in his power to do so. That big three he hit on the wing, that could have been the shot of the game for KU, kind of contested. He had a couple nice drives himself. I thought he played really well. Unfortunate for him to go out like that. And uh, he certainly will be one of my all-time favorites of one-year players at KU. He would go on that that short list of a, a really fun guy to cover, uh, super easy guy to talk to, really fun player to watch, so good defensively. So unfortunate that his KU career ends like that. Uh, and then the last good goat, just Joe's deep three. If, you, if you're saying the most fun moment of the game for KU, I guess Dewan's runner to put him up 12 might be up there, but it's got to be Joe's deep three from the logo, right? That was the most uh, fun moment for KU. But yeah, that'll do it for our uh, good goats. Let's get to our bad goats goats here second but first this episode of locked on jayhawks is brought to you by fanduel sportsbook the tournament is heating up and now is the perfect time to download fanduel america's number one rated sportsbook because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win just download the fanduel sportsbook app it's safe secure super easy to use then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained um you can bet on some of the tournament action at fanduel i just placed some uh futures for the different regions this morning I'll, I'll say this it's weird when whenever michigan state makes deep runs in tournaments kansas flames out early so i looked back every single final four that tom Izzo has made at michigan state which is like i think there's eight of them or something kansas has lost by the sweet 16 and i think of the eight six of the eight kansas lost in the first weekend kansas lost the first weekend michigan state upset their two seed i don't know you can get them at, I think it was like plus 280 on FanDuel. Uh, plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payout with same-game parlays. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, bouts here to finish things up. The free throw shooting. Arkansas came in not good at shooting free throws this season. Um, so the fact that they shot over 80% from the line was certainly not something that you expected and certainly could have been, I guess, the difference in the game. Like, even after that game on the season, they're shooting 69.6% .6 from the line. That is 268th in the country. In SEC-only play, they shot 66.9%, which was 13th of 14 teams in the SEC. They were on a heater from the free throw line. They shot over 80%. That was a huge difference. But for KU... It could have been okay if you just hit your free throws. They were only 72%. And that was something that we talk about flaws that KU had this season that they showed throughout the season, especially early in the year. They finished this season 72% on free throws. That's 173rd 
in the country. So you're just about average there. You would like to be, you know, at least, I guess, in the top 100. It certainly hurt them there. And more than anything, it was the two missed front ends. The two missed front ends were what killed you because it's not just the points, but it's the fact that you're getting another free throw attempt on top of it. Um, So realistically, if you make both front ends, then you get two more free throws. You might just split the next two. That's a three-point swing right there. Um, even if you make one of the front ends, maybe you hit the second front end. Maybe it's a two-point swing. Those are huge plays and huge momentum turns in the Arkansas. Rebounding, you gave up 14 offensive rebounds. We've seen that at times be issues for KU. They didn't get enough on the defensive glass in this game. Part of that was because of the center foul trouble. Part of that was because Arkansas is really athletic and physical and does well at those things. And another part of that, KU just didn't, kind of crashed them hard enough and certainly the one at the end of the game where Ricky Council misses the the free throw and you would have had the ball down two that completely changed the game it, it really did that they got the the rebound or the uh free throw there or what I don't know was it a one-point game whatever it was um it completely changed the game and uh hurt KU certainly uh the bench gets a bad goat here Joe hit that big three that I mentioned Bobby had like a uh scoop on kind of a drop ball steal and then went and scored but the bench centers did not provide near the impact that KJ did. And overall, the bench was two for seven. It was an opportunity for the bench to, to give you real minutes and give you real plays because of the foul trouble to both Ernest and KJ. And you didn't really get enough there. And that ended up being, you know, when you had minutes with Zuby out there and uh, Zach Clemens, like it just wasn't enough. And that's when Arkansas started mounting their comeback and switching the momentum. Uh, to be clear, I did not put Grady Dick in here. He only had seven points. He only went three for eight. So, you know, not a, not a good game for Grady, but he was also solid on the glass in a game that you didn't do great on the glass overall. He didn't really get picked on defensively as much as, honestly, the Howard game. Maybe I'm just misremembering, but I don't think he had a good game. I don't think he had a bad game either. So I didn't put him here. But, uh, yeah, that's our bad goats. And the, the worst goat of them all, the season is now over. We all go into hibernation in Lawrence. But, hey, the football team's pretty good, so uh, we're going to have a, a lot more to talk about over the offseason. We're going to have more offseason talk with KU basketball, though, because I know people are going to be chomping ahead. Uh, you know, what's the roster going to look like? Who's coming back? All, all this stuff. We'll get to that later in the week. We'll have some Jalen Wilson stuff. Nick Schwartz going to join us tomorrow for a, a little KU basketball, too. This has been Locked on Jayhawks. Have a good rest of your day. You can catch me on Rock Sports Talk later today. Don't forget you can get Locked on wherever you get any of your podcasts and on YouTube. Till next time. Later.